purpose of this screencast is to demonstrate how various processing parameters impact the number of theoretical stages required to perform an absorption process. Recall, absorption is the selective removal of a component from a gas stream using a liquid. The number of theoretical stages required to obtain a desired separation can be evaluated graphically by plotting the operating line and equilibrium line. For dilute solutions, a linear equilibrium line is often sufficient, with the slope of the equilibrium line equal to the Henry's Law constant. The dynamic simulation shows an absorption column on the right, with an inlet gas concentration of 91 ppm and an outlet concentration of 15 ppm. The gas flows from the bottom to the top of the column. It is contacted in countercurrent orientation by a liquid solvent that initially contains no solute. The flow rate of the liquid stream is much larger than that of the gas stream, 115 megamole per hour versus 1 megamole per hour. The outlet concentration of the liquid phase can be obtained by a simple component mass balance on the entire column. The graph on the left plots the concentration of the solute in the gas phase versus the concentration of solute in the liquid phase. Note that both the y and x axes are plotted on a solute free basis. This is often done in absorption to simplify the graphical analysis. When plotted on a solute-free basis, the operating line is a straight line and does not exhibit any curvature. Y1, the gas phase composition at the top of the column, is equal to 15 ppm, and the liquid concentration at this point is equal to zero. Disordered pair is on the operating line since both streams are on the same side of the top stage. The slope of the operating line is fixed by the ratio of the liquid to vapor molar flow rates, L over V. For the initial conditions in this dynamic simulation, three equilibrium stages are required to achieve the desired separation. Stages are counted off by stepping between the operating line and the equilibrium line. The absorption process is impacted by numerous factors, and this dynamic simulation does an excellent job of showing how these parameters change the operating line, equilibrium line, and number of stages. First, we will vary the temperature. The Henry's Law constant is a function of temperature, and as we increase the temperature, the slope of the equilibrium line changes. H will increase as the temperature is increased, moving the equilibrium line closer to the operating line. This will require more stages to reduce the solute concentration from 91 to 15 ppm. Note that the outlet concentration of the liquid increases slightly as the temperature is increased. To reduce the number of stages for absorption, we would like to run the column at as low a temperature as possible. Next, we will investigate the impact of column pressure. Varying the pressure will also change the equilibrium line. As the pressure is lowered, the equilibrium line moves closer to the operating line. As the pressure is increased, the slope of the operating line decreases, opening up space between the operating line and the equilibrium line. This results in fewer stages for a given separation. The third parameter we will vary is the solvent flow rate. The initial L over V ratio was 115 to 1. As L is decreased, the operating line slope decreases. Remember, the slope is equal to L over V, and more stages are required. As L is increased, the slope of the operating line increases and fewer stages are required. This is a trade-off we will see multiple times in this class, with capital costs, the size of the column, inversely related to the operating cost the cost of the solvent. The minimum liquid flow rate, L over V min, can be obtained by the slope of the operating line when it touches the equilibrium line. The anchor points for the operating line are the ordered pairs for the liquid and vapor compositions at the top and bottom of the column. The dynamic simulation allows us to investigate how changing the inlet and outlet compositions changes the absorption process. Initially, we assume the incoming solvent had no solute. If you use a process in which the solvent is recycled, it may enter with a small amount of solute present. As the inlet liquid concentration is varied, note the impact on the operating line, the number of stages, and the outlet liquid concentration. Finally, the dynamic simulation allows us to vary the inlet and outlet compositions in the vapor. Again, note how the anchor point on the operating line changes, and note the impact on the number of theoretical stages required. Take a few minutes to work with the dynamic simulation, investigating how the parameters in the absorption process change the behaviors of the operating line and the equilibrium line. You will improve your understanding of this important separation process. 
by spending a few minutes varying the parameters.